Uh, last Wednesday, we talked with our financial instructor, Michael Mazarant of the Retirement Education Foundation. We've been taking you through stages of your financial planning, your financial life, your journey. Because we want financial freedom for you. That's what everybody, that should be the goal, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of always thinking about, oh, I'm going to save my money and buy all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. You should be thinking, I'm going to save my money so I can buy some freedom, some time later yeah. in life. Down right? the road in retirement, right? Yeah. Right. What age is there, and I know we're going to kind of generalize here, but as people get into their 40s and mm -hmm. 50s, is there a magic number that you look at for retirement? So there's not a magic number, but by 40s, you want to have around three to four times your salary saved to retirement. Around your 50s, you're shooting for somewhere, in, you know, that's six to eight times your salary in retirement, uh, your, your salary saving for, saved for retirement. Okay. Now, around your 40s and 50s, this is when the numbers start to get bigger. You've been saving, 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 saving in your 20s and your 30s, hopefully to the Roth like we talked about in the past. And so number one, this is when compound interest starts to kick in. You know, when you, when you have $50,000 saved and the market goes up 10% and you earn 5,000 bucks in your account, not that exciting. But as you're saving more and more and more and it's growing, 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 10% of $500,000 is now 50 grand you're earning in a year. Mm. It's getting more exciting, so mm -hmm. that's great. And number two, as we're in our 40s and 50s, we're probably getting raises and promotions, hopefully, and so now we're in a higher tax bracket. If we've done a good job saving to Roth in our 20s and 30s, now is when we want to start considering shifting to the traditional 401k, traditional IRA, and saving pre-tax dollars. Because when you're in a higher tax bracket, you want to save the pre-tax dollars and get, get the tax break now. Mm. Yeah, with the Roth, you're going to get the tax break down the road. With right. the Roth, you pay the taxes up front, it grows mm -hmm. tax-free, you get the tax-free income down the road, and that's if we're in our 20s and 30s in the lower tax bracket, saved to the Roth. Now in our 40s and 50s, start to shift to, the, to traditional 401ks, traditional IRAs. And that's such a, such a great reminder, too, in, in something, if you've been doing it the right way all along, mm -hmm. what if you haven't been? Like, what if you're, you, you wake up and you're 40 years old and you say, man, I really haven't done a thing, but you start thinking about it now. Um, what would your advice to that person be? So number one, save as much as possible. And Roth versus traditional it just comes down to tax planning. Mm -hmm. if, you're in a, if you're in a high tax bracket right now, higher than what you'll think you'll be in retirement, save to traditional. If you're in a lower tax bracket or a similar tax bracket now than what you'll be in, in retirement, save to the Roth side. How much of this is emotional too? Like, you know, I mean, if you're married and... Maybe your wife spends too much money or something. Excuse me. <laughs> that goes, that goes <laughs> both ways. We see that both ways. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Yes, we thank do. You. We do. Right, but, but, but yeah, as you're considering retirement, how do you work in all these costs and how do you know how much you need? What are the biggest expenses that you're going to face? Well, you should tackle it. So there's a needs and there's wants. Now, from a needs perspective, we have you know the fixed cost, the the mortgage, the, if we still have one, the cars, um, health insurance. Those are the fixed costs. And then the wants. Start to project out. Okay, well, I want to take three vacations a year. Mm -hmm. I want to buy that second place down in Florida. What are the wants? And start to add up all those projections to make sure. Okay, do I have enough cash flow in retirement to swing all these mm -hmm. things? And if I don't, well, what's more important to you? Retiring sooner? or having those things in retirement. For some people, they want to retire sooner and they'll give up the, the, the home in Florida. For other people, they need to have that home or they want to have that home in Florida and they'll work longer to get, to get it. Mm. So much of like, as you're talking, the, the, the one thing I keep getting back to is a theme of communication. Mm -hmm. Like sit down and talk about what you really have in mind. Like have a goal and yeah. try to so reach that. It's hugely important. And also, you know, estate planning, this is, the, uh, this is not fun to talk about, but in terms of having a plan in case something happens happens to you or your spouse. For each other, we need powers of attorney in case we're incapacitated, we're, we have an accident, we have a stroke, knock on wood, God forbid. And then if, if there are kids, you have to have a plan for the kids. Because if something happens to you and your spouse, do you want your kids to receive a lump sum inheritance? Most people don't, whether the kids are too young or even if they're in their 20s and 30s, but maybe not mature enough yet to receive a windfall inheritance. You know, the IRS statistic is that 85% of inheritances are spent within nine months. Wow. Oh my gosh. So imagine you've been working in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, very hard, saving. Something happens to you, unfortunately. The kids receive it, and that money's gone in nine months. Within one year. 
It's unbelievable. I think I would come back down from above. <laughs> and so estate planning, wills, trusts, and powers of attorney can protect those things to structure that for the kids better. You do mention aging parents, too, which uh, is just a huge part mm -hmm. of this uh, when you're facing that retirement age. Yeah, another unfun topic to talk about, but really important to have a plan because if the parents need help there has to be a plan of are they on their own will they go on medicaid are there can you and maybe siblings step in and help take care of mom and dad there should be a plan in place before that happens because okay. if you don't have a plan in place and now you're trying to scramble to find one it's it can get ugly you don't want to scramble no, absolutely man uh, good stuff michael you're coming back at 10. yep we, we need keep you. learning. <laughs> well, I think it's also just a, such a great reminder to people to, you know, get this stuff in order yeah. now while it's, there's time. You know, the estate planning you know, of aging parents, it's I'll get there, I'll get there, right. I know I got to get it done. Right. Get it done. Get it on the calendar. Yeah, it's Do something it you don't want to face, but we all have to. Mm -hmm. All right, for more information, by the way, you can go to retirementplanningedu.org. Free resources for you. We'll be right back. All right, here's the question. Are you ready to retire? Do you think about retirement? I know for people in my age group, that's always a big discussion. Mm -hmm. When are you going to retire? What do you, what's the plan? So uh, now's the time to start thinking about it, right? To Michael, have a successful retirement. That's right. Michael Mazaran back with us from the Retirement Education Foundation. And, and you talk about retirement and, and Michael, you know, we're focusing on 40s and 50s at a time when, you know, people are looking ahead down the road. Mm -hmm. In your 20s and 30s, you're like, that is so far away. Yeah, retirement, <laughs> yeah, I'll get there eventually right. I'm trying to buy a house right now in your 20s and 30s but in 40s and 50s it's time to start setting some tangible goals in terms of okay when do I want to retire what age am I shooting for 60 65 do I love my job and I'm gonna work until 70 everybody's different now in terms of retirement dates one thing to be aware of if you do think you're gonna work until 65 70 or longer you got to be aware of two things number one health some, we don't always get to pick our retirement date. If we mm. get sick and we can't work, that isn't a guarantee. And number two, we have recessions and you know, ageism is alive and well with, with employers in, in mm. some places here. And so if we're aging and we're an expensive employee, we might get let go. So if we're planning on working until 65 plus, just keep that in mind, we might not get that choice. So retirement dates is one. Number two is lifestyle. Am I going to maintain the current lifestyle? Am I gonna cut back in retirement? Am I gonna spend more in retirement? So there was a really famous study done about 10 years ago that they claim we found the golden answer. People mm. spend on average 78% in retirement based on what they were spending when they were working. But that study included everybody. Mm. People who do a good job saving for retirement and have saved some resources typically spend more mm -hmm. in those first five years of retirement than when they were working because now you have more free time to go travel and go do things you want to do. Yeah, it's, it can be expensive to be retired. Oh. And you're no it longer really All you're doing is eating and drinking and yeah. traveling, right? Isn't that what retirement's traveling, all about? Uh, maybe doing a little shopping, maybe a little redecorating, all those things. Exactly. And you're no longer bringing money in. so. Don't underestimate the cost of your retirement, right? And that's why it's so important to start mapping these things out mm -hmm. and start to add up. No one's going to nail the number down to the dollar, but start to project what do I think I'm going to want on a monthly basis or an annual basis once I'm retired. And then the third piece here is legacy. Are we trying to leave a legacy when we're gone to someone or not, to kids or family or charities? Is it important to us to leave wealth or not. And if we're trying to leave some wealth, then we need to make sure we're saving more while we're working mm -hmm. to leave wealth when we're gone. If we're not concerned with that, that's a whole different story. But having these answers is really important. And in your, in your 40s and 50s is when we start, have, we need to start making these tangible goals, not just generic save, 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 save. I yeah, to, you got to put pen to paper and kind of break it down. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. the, the importance too, if you decide if you're 45 like me and you say, you know what, I, I do want to travel i do want to do things you know when i'm 65 years old is it a good idea to try to contribute more to any particular uh you know 401k or ira or for sure so if you think you're going to want to spend more in retirement mm -hmm. at least in those first five ten years than when you're working that means you got to save more while you're working that means we might need to skip that trip when we're 45 to save for the trip when we're 65 mm -hmm. and if we're if we can max out the 401k that's another thing too is once you turn 50 50 plus you can now do the catch-up in the 401ks so for 2024 everyone 
401's limited to a $23,000 401k contribution. Once you're 50 and over, you can do an extra 7,500. So mm -hmm. 50 and over, you can save $30,500 this year into a 401k. So if we can save extra, go for it, save extra. Mm -hmm. Then you can travel more and spend more and do more once you're retired. Um, I had a question for you, Michael, and I just, uh, I'm thinking about that 401k, and it, uh, <laughs> left my well, mind. In the, in the meantime, while you're thinking about yeah. it, Dina, let me ask you, too, about the importance. So many people maybe try to do this on their own or only have, you know, a savings account and perhaps a, a 401k. Mm -hmm. How important is it, do you think, to maybe sit down with um, oh, an advisor, a prof an advisor yeah. and really help map out what you're trying to do? So really, before anyone sits down with a professional, our advice is just get educated. That's why the, the charity teaches the eight hour classes. Mm -hmm. It's eight hours there. I mean, they're master's level classes in terms of going through income structuring, tax planning, how much is enough, long term care safety nets, all these different pieces. Because what we find is that a lot of people don't even know the right questions to ask until they get the education first. Mm -hmm. And they can do that via your website? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have our website, we have all the classes online, retirementplanningedu.org, and we teach classes, you know, in person and on Zoom for people who are around the country. I know my question. <laughs> what was the number you said last hour? As you get close to retirement, you should have this much times your income. Yeah, saved. so ideally in your 40s, you want to have somewhere in the range of three to four times your current salary saved for retirement. By your 50s, you want to have somewhere in the range of six to eight times your salary saved for retirement. Now, okay. again, if you're not there yet, don't get discouraged. Just keep saving. If you are there, don't get complacent. You got to keep saving. You can't you can't mm -hmm. let your foot off the gas at this stage of the game. Got it. Such uh, such a great resource. And we invite everybody to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. Some great free resources there and uh, everything like that. Get yourself educated educated and um, Michael you're such a great resource in order to do that thank yeah. you so much thank you thank for you. sharing Absolutely. all this good information no doubt